Let's see if you can see that. It shoots uh, a laser down, down your fiber. Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel and welcome to all the new subscribers who have joined us in the last week since I put out the video about the 64S and the Behringer Wing. It's really cool to see that much interest in this series. And so far there's been over a hundred comments and suggestions and ideas for what to cover in the future on these consoles. So keep those coming. It really, really does help me to know what's important to you features wise. Today, we've got another one of everybody's favorite uh, series, the What's In Your Kit series. And you can be in a future episode if you'd like to be, dcsoundup.com forward slash submit your kit. We've got all the details there on how to send in a video. It's always a lot of fun to be able to highlight what you're doing out in the field and the gear you're using and the experience and perspective that you can bring uh, to the table for everybody to learn from. So anybody that wants to send in a video, I really do appreciate it, especially the folks that are outside of the audio world uh, in production that, uh, that we've been able to learn from. And today we're heading to Dallas Fort Worth here virtually to meet up with Kane Harrison, and he is the video director at a regional production company. And his daily work involves a lot of fiber optics and networking. And I think that's a really interesting thing to take a look at because a lot of our audio is heading that direction. If you're not already using fiber and networking, he's got some really cool stuff in here that helps him to deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's jump in and see what tools and gear Kane's carrying and see if you can spot any similarities to the other video folks we've had on the channel so far. Big thanks and welcome to the channel, Mr. Kane Harrison. Hey everyone, my name is Kane. Um, I work for a production company here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area um, as the video director. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in to this what's in my kit video. All right, so I am nobody special. Um, I serve as the video director for a production company. So what I pack in my kit is what I think I might possibly need on any given day at any given show. So, um, so this is my Pelican. It's um, it's just a standard 1510. I can fly with it, um, which is always nice. But then I normally um, just throw it on the truck, and that works miracles. So we'll go ahead and get into this. So right on top. I have got some some fiber optic patch cables. We use fiber for just about everything, and so this is this is your number one fail point. So fiber patch cables, I always have a couple of extra just in case, as well as fiber couplers, both LC and ST. We use ST for our trunks, so that's what I use. When I first got my Pelican, I just had an empty base with the lid organizer, and it was awful. So I really recommend if you've got a Pelican, get the Trek Pack system. It's it's worth the money that you're gonna fork out for it. But again, in this industry, it's a it's an investment. You're you're not spending money just for the heck of it. You're you're investing in yourself. In this section right here, this is kind of just my my personal tools. And, and stuff like that. So I've got a pair of gloves, a uh, 25 foot tape measure, headlamp, a couple of rolls of E-tape, a um, pair of snips, um, and a, a voltage tester. I keep all these, you know, right here, easily accessible just in case I have to, I have to get to them quickly and, and uh, work on something. So also in this section, just because it fits, I've got an eight port gigabit switch, uh, one foot patch cable, and a pair of strippers for um, RG, RG6, RG59 um, coax cable. So I keep everything I might possibly need to fix a BNC end. Um, in here as well as uh, RJ45 end just in case because those are extremely big fail points on your on your cables so also in this section I've got laptop sound port um, one of the best tools I've ever invested in 
got a, a disto, just a just a cheap one at Amazon. I think it only goes like 150 feet, but for what I'm doing, it, it works great. And then I've also got a couple of things for intercom. So I've got an adapter that splits intercom into your headset and a 3.5 millimeter jack so I can plug in my in-ears. Um, this helps a lot when you're when you're out at front of house and you're trying to hear intercom but it's obviously loud so that really helps and then I also have just a an over the ear intercom headset so this is you know Britney Spears type look whatever you want to call it um, I really enjoy it and it was a it was a cheaper option than the point source audio which I know a lot of people use jump over here so right on top as well I've got a BNC tool um, just in case you get into some tight areas with your with your SDI cable this this comes in really handy for getting those cables um, put into place so in this section as well I've got two black magic SDI to HDMI converters as well as in the lid organizer I've got another Blackmagic micro converter as well as a decimator MDHX um, best tool of the trade decimator you, you can't go wrong decimator DAC 70 something like something like that that's going to be a scaler and converter um, is going to work miracles when troubleshooting as well as just converting and splitting out signals so all right we'll move over to the right side of the pelican I've got I've got these zipper pouches. A lot of people are using these. I really like them because they keep everything organized. Um, and then I just took a sharpie to mine, so I know exactly what's in in most of them. So I got blue on is video adapters. This is just all my old mini display port adapters. It it comes in handy because a lot of laptops have mini display port. And then my laptop has USB-C Thunderbolt 3, so I just keep all those adapters in my backpack so that if I need them, I can get them at any moment. Green one is power supplies, so everything from the switch to the converters needs power. So this is just all my, all my power supplies just in the bag. Um, I've, taken, I've taken my label maker and put a label on everything to tell me what that power supply goes to. Uh, most of the time, most power, most power supplies are switching and most, or, mo most of the internal power supplies are switching. So you, can, you should be able to do anything on here, but it's just handy to ha know what goes with what. Um, the orange, orange bag is XLR. I've just got a couple of short XLR cables. Um, this this helps for intercom if you're you're just jumping at front of house or something. But then it also is a great patch point for audio, obviously. All right. So next, I've got two Sennheiser mic bags. They don't actually have microphones in them. This one is all my cable making stuff. So I've got RJ45 ends. I've got RG6 ends for uh, BNC and SDI cable. So ag again, I, I carry everything everything to fix cable. So I got RJ45 crimper and I've got a BNC crimper. You never know when you're going to get to a show and you have a bad cable and that cable is the only one of its kind. Um, it's never a bad idea um, for shop guys to pack, pack an extra. However, you know, stuff gets forgotten or stuff's out on other shows. It happens. So it's it, I've I've found it to just be really useful to carry the tools to fix fix your cable. This one, this Sennheiser bag, I've got some audio adapters. So I've got a couple of humbusters in here. Um, I've got an Elite Core in ear body pack. Um, as well as a headphone extension and a couple of RCA um, couplers. Um, these these come in handy every once in a while, especially the humbusters, 
sometimes you just don't have a clean signal from from whatever you whatever you're putting into the board whether that's your iPod or coming out of the board going into into your video switcher sometimes you just don't have a clean signal and that is those those things are great bottom of this side I've got a couple of patch cables again I always have extra um, and then I have this is a custom made um, intercom extension so it's a four pin XLR connector and it's just an extension for my intercom headset I also on this side have my Klein tough meter it's it's not a multimeter I will tell you that but I and I do have a multimeter but this works great for testing voltage and that's simply what it does it's going to test voltage so it's going to tell me whether I have 120 or 208 and then it it'll also tell me whether I have a clean signal from uh, from a generator or whatever you might be using mini power strip sometimes you just gotta add at three three jacks so I carry this little mini travel one it is um, it's on Amazon it's like 15 bucks it's great also carry a drum key I'm a drummer so I understand the fact that people forget drum keys, especially when you're providing backline. People might not always bring a drum key, and then they're always asking, "Do you have a drum key?" Yes, unfortunately, I do. I might not ever get it back, but um, I I do carry a drum key. Going back to the fiber, I've got a visual fault locator or VFL. This shoots light. I'll see if you can see that. It shoots uh, a laser down down your fiber so that you can tell one whether it's working or two where it's broken so on single mode patch kit or fiber in general most of the time you're um, you're gonna be able to see through the jacket with this light wherever your fiber may be broken this has come in handy multiple times when trying to diagnose a diagnose a problem. Last last couple things in this section, I've got a couple of USB lights. These are actually made by Goal Zero. I don't know if they sell them anymore, but I've got like four or five of these, and these are great because they're just little USB lights. So you can plug them into the side of your Apple keyboard. You can plug them into the side of your laptop, or you you can actually. I don't necessarily always recommend it, but I have done it a couple times. Just take a wall board like for charging your phone and just plug it into that. It actually will power these and those put up, these put off a lot of light and I, I really like them. Moving up here to the lid organizer, on the right side in the tall pouch I've just got some hand tools. So I've got a Klein 11M1, a Stubby just in case. Um, this is a Husky star bit and if you've ever taken a pa apart a true one connector this comes in very handy because most of the time they're not Phillips head screws so if you're trying to repair something on site you you gotta have a star bit got a good old C wrench and I've actually got mine on this key back it um it's a retractable keychain holder but it actually works really well for keeping it and making sure that I don't drop it if I am up in a lift or um, on a ladder or something and then just a pair of wire strippers so um, again being able to fix things if they if they go wrong because a lot of times it will last few things um, I've got some spike tape I normally have the have two or three more colors in here but uh, they have seemed to go miss gone, gone missing. So last two things on the lid organizer are these 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 two pouches. These are really what my, they're really just my catch-all pouches. Um, they carry just a whole bunch of crap, but you never know. I've got a pair of Sure in ears. Uh, this is just the like SE 215s, just cheap. Missing a missing an ear tip like. You know, some sometimes you just need a pair of in ears if you forget yours. I run all clear in ears for my customs, but this is a great backup option. Um, also got a couple of sharpies in here, some lens cleaning wipes, 
And then I actually have like a six inch SDI patch cable. I, I don't know where I got this, but this has actually come in handy multiple times. And I, I just continue to carry it. Then the last thing is just a couple of a couple of rolls of Velcro. The company that I work for, we have recently gone through and serialized all our cables and put Velcro on them, but sometimes Velcro breaks, so I just carry some extra Velcro just in case because I don't like getting back to the shop with e-tape around every cable. All right, guys, appreciate you um, checking in on what's in my kit. You know, again, this is just everything I think I need to carry. You might need to carry something completely different, and you might not need to carry any of this at all. You might just need your backpack and a pair of gloves. You, you never know. It, it really just depends on the job. So, you know, for me, this this works, and I, I love it, but it might not work for you. Thanks again, Kane, for taking the time out to share your kit with us. I'm always really impressed with how much everyone is able to get into a kit with a little bit of organization and planning. And that Trek Pack divider system that Kane's using is absolutely the way to go if you've got a lot going on in your kit as he does. Uh, simple ideas as well, like grouping power supplies together into one bag instead of trying to keep a power supply with each piece of gear it goes to can really make a big difference in making your kit not only like clean and presentable to look at but really the idea behind keeping a clean and presentable kit is that things are in a place that's predictable that you can find them quickly when you need them in a hurry on the job so uh, organizing things down into bags and categories in those dividers is really really smart way to keep your kit functional and uh, usable that you'll actually go back to it a lot when you're out in the field hit the comments down below if you've got questions about anything in this video and help me say thank you to Kay for taking the time to show us what he's up to. I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to be in a future episode, remember dcsoundop.com forward slash submit your kit and all the details are over there. Stay safe out there, subscribe and share if you wanna see more of these videos, it really helps. And thanks to everyone who supports this channel through Patreon right now, especially that is a massive help to keep this going. Links below if you wanna join us. I'll see you next time.